She's always telling us the bravest stories. Uh, welcome to the Quint Meghna. Thank you, Eva. I understand that Lakshmi's story is something that you wanted to get to the world, but what is it exactly that you want to tell the world through this story? I don't have a, a focused message as such, and even if I do, I don't want to make that a precursor for my audience. I don't like doing that. I, as a person, don't like being told how to feel and what to think. And I'd like to give that to the audience as well as a filmmaker. Personally as well, when I first uh, read the title of the film, the onomatopoeia, the, the sound word that comes with it almost had a sense of positivity to it, which as an audience confused me a little bit. And it's slowly grown on me as well. So I wanted to ask you how you came to that decision and... Chapak is the sound of a splash. I knew that I would have a title song in the film and I knew that I wanted the film's title in the song. So originally the script was titled Gandhak, which is the Hindi name for sulfuric acid. I realized that Gandhak may not lend itself very nicely to song, to lyrics. And so then I thought of Chapak and Chapak is a very lyrical word in itself. And the idea of splashing can be one which is very romantic, very poetic. But when that splash is one of acid, it's extremely violent. The power of that irony is what drew me um, to this word. I had read somewhere that you said that when you were deciding Deepika's look for the film, uh, you didn't want to exactly recreate Lakshmi. You wanted to show what it would have been like if, God forbid, that would have happened to someone like Deepika. Yeah. I, I want you to tell me a little about how you felt when you saw her look for the first time, finally. We came 90% to what is the final achieved look in the film within our first trial. Oh. Like I've said that there is a very striking resemblance between Deepika and Lakshmi inherently. The prosthetic only amplified that resemblance. So it was surreal to see that. I clearly remember the moment I have pictures of that day. It, we did the prosthetic test at my home. It suddenly was very um, gratifying that your instinct worked out. What about Vikrant? What, you, what drove you to him? Vikrant is an actor that I admire tremendously from the time that I saw Death in the Gun. All right. And the desire to work with him has been there for a while. When this character came into being, Amol, a North Indian boy, an activist, mm -hmm. uh, slightly disgruntled, and yet with a gooey core inside waiting to be found, somehow, Vikrant just fit in. And that's what happens with me as a director, is that all my decisions are extremely instinctive. During Talwar times, you had spoken about how you weren't truly able to celebrate the success of the film at the time because the parents were at, at the time in jail. During the filming of this film, or perhaps even now, uh, do you, did you ever fear at any point that you may not be able to do justice to Lakshmi and her story? No. No. Because when you know what you've written, and you've done a lot of work at the script level itself. Half the process is achieved there. If you have those kind of doubts, you should not be venturing into telling a story like this. You need to be extremely sure. Did Lakshmi get to see the film? Yes. She saw the offline cut, actually. She's very happy with the film. And she, she loves it. She loves how it's turned out. Uh, you've worked with Alia, you've worked with Deepika. What is it about the two actors that you find unique to both of them that probably sticks out to you? And as personalities, they're very different. Right. There is a very cheerful side to the people. <laughs> okay. And there is a quiet side to Alia. Yes. Rather than seeing their differences, I would rather focus on the one thing that, that, you know, attaches me to the two of them equally is that they have immense respect and focus for their profession and for their craft. On your sets, what uh, did, was there a moment where you probably felt shaken with what you were doing and you you would looked around for support perhaps at a time? No, I can't give myself the luxury of looking around for support because that's part of my job as a director. But I know that if I ever need it, I have the entire 200 people on the set to have my back. Right. Um, because that's the kind of team we are. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you very clearly put your heart and soul into this film. Um, is there anything that, looking back, you would have changed or done differently? <laughs> like I said before, I'd probably give us a few more shooting days. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was intense and um, everyone was, uh, you know, pushed to their limits. 
the entire crew, the actors, everybody. This is my last question. Um, oftentimes when you delve into someone's pain or someone's life like this, uh, it gives you new perspectives about the way you yourself see the world. Did that happen to you? Is, have you taken a learning out of this? The learning I got was that, you know, we're capable of immense inner strength. And these girls, these acid survivors are an epitome of how they've tapped that strength and uh, used it uh, positively. It's so inspiring. And then it also makes you realize that, you know, you, you think you have these big problems mm. and, you know, your life is so difficult and it just pales to insignificance when you're sitting in front of these girls. I wish you the best of luck with the film. I'm truly looking forward to it. I Thank you so much. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you.